Person, though, tired of this, man. <laughs> I want to be with you all. <laughs> but hey, we're going to stay safe in the meantime. We're longing for the day when we can see you in person. All right, I hope you all are dancing in your kitchens, in your living rooms, right, Gabe? <laughs> You better be dancing. Right? What we're else is so, there to do? We're just so glad we're just performing. Right? Ain't gonna do that. And if you can, tune in on some Mondays if we'll have a show. Next week we'll have it. And if you're on Facebook, you can see it. That's where we're gonna be. Far too many of you cry. Of you died. You know we've got to find a way to bring some love here today. Father, 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 we don't need to escalate. Now 
You are still on for another, let's say, another song. Sure. Okay. We'll sing another song. (laughs) Many of you remember this song. Late Great Teddy Pendergast. So we need to ask the question, what's going on? But also, we need to tell people, wake up. It's a new day, wake up. Do you see the light at the end of the tunnel? I hope so. It's way down there, but I see it's a glimmer. I see it. I see a glimmer. Where we need it, where we need it, where we need it. Wake up, everybody. Check it out. Wake up, everybody. No more sleeping in bed. No backward thinking, it's time to think ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There's so much hatred, war and poverty. Oh, wake up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. 
Maybe then they listen to what I have to say. They're the ones who's coming, and the world is in their hands. When you teach the children, teach them the very best you can. World won't get no better if we just let it be. No, 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 no. The world won't get no better. We gotta change it, just you and me. Listen, wake up all the doctors, make the old people well. They're the ones who suffer, who catch all the hell. They don't have so very long till the judgment day. So make them happy. Before they pass away, listen, wake up all the builders, time to build a new day. I know we can make it if we all lend a hand. The only thing we have to do is put it in our minds. Surely things will work out, do it every time. Well, it won't get no better if you don't let it try. Na, 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 na. Well, it won't get no better. We gotta change it, just you and me. Oh, see? Mm -hmm. Now look at yeah, your picture. That orange, that orange button isn't there anymore. Now watch. Come on, fellas, play something. It isn't anymore. It isn't anymore. That where, where, where? Yeah. We talk. They can hear us. Okay. Brothers, brothers, we'll keep on. Then your day on base. Bring it at home for me. You know what? You've got to wake up, everybody. You've got to wake up, everybody. No more sleeping, no more weeping. Just loving your heart for everybody. Come on, wake up, everybody. Come on, wake up. Everybody, everybody, come on up. Wake up. Everybody, come on. Everybody, everybody, come on. Wake up. Everybody, everybody, everybody. wake up. Woo. Everybody, wake up. Everybody, one more time. Wake up. Hey, everybody. All right, thank you. All right. All right. Wake up. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, a big round of applause for Athene Wilson and the fabulous band. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Emily. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday and happy Black History Month. Uh, this is always one of my favorite celebrations, and I know I, I usually... Uh, Love it when we're all together and we can eat wonderful food and be on the dance floor, but we have a lot of fun things planned today and I'm so glad that you all have joined yeah. us. Yeah. We'll have some more folks uh, joining us along the way. Um, so, uh, so again, one of my favorite celebrations really our opportunity uh, to, to take the time uh, that we take all the time, but really to take some very special time to celebrate the strength and the contributions of our Black community here in Boston and, of course, of our older adults in the city. 
um, and a wonderful opportunity to see you all as well. Um, so I'm going to get us started uh, quickly here so we don't uh, lose any time. Uh, but before we move it over uh, to our uh, to our wonderful drummers, I want to just remind you we're going to have two contests later for best hat and best high tea set. Uh, so feel free feel free to grab a paper and pen. Uh, we'll be showing a little slideshow later on, and you can write down your favorites so that you uh, you can vote on them. So grab a paper and a pen for when we get to that part of the program. Uh, so before uh, before anything further, it is my pleasure today to welcome the Jaja -Ja Drummers for our libation ceremony. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jaja -Ja Drummers. All right. Good evening to everyone that is watching. We are the Jaja -Ja Drummers. We like to welcome you to another year of Black History Month. And you know, with every Black History we got to invite the ancestors because they have paved the way for us. So we are about to pay tribute to the ancestors with a little by libation. Jaja drummers, uh, that was fabulous. We couldn't hear a piece of it, but when we get you, we're going to have you back at the end, and then we'll we'll hear the whole thing. Um, so I wanna I wanna say thank you so much for um, for bringing us in with our libation ceremony, um, and now I'd like to introduce Father Oscar Pratt uh, from St. Catherine Drex Drexel Parish, who is going to give our invocation today. And in that drumming and in that libation service, our ancestors have been revered. And so we say, Ashe, Ashe. We turn to the God who has given us this beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So we turn to you, O oh God with hearts filled with thanksgiving, with hearts filled with gratitude, with hearts filled with anticipation for what has yet to be and for that fulfillment of justice and peace, of truth and righteousness that is to come. Lord, we, we thank you for this time that you have given us, for bringing us together with our elders, these people whom we reveal revere as holders of wisdom, the keepers of our story, a story of struggle, of pain, a story of victory and social gains. Lord, bless this gathering and let us celebrate not just our past, but also your promises for a more just and peace-filled future. Lord, we thank you for the, the joy for all of what is to take place in this celebration today. And we just ask your continued outpouring of fortitude, of good health, of strengthening all people so that as we have come this far by faith, we trust that you will take us even farther building us into that beloved community you have created us to be. And I make this prayer in the name of the one whom I recognize as my Lord and Savior, the one that we know as our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ, now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Father Pratt. Um, and as I said at the beginning, this is really one of my favorite celebrations of the year. I look forward to it every year. Um, this is also a bittersweet year for us as our mayor, Mayor Walsh, is headed to Washington to help move both Boston and the country forward. And, and when he does that, our city council president, Kim Janey, will become our acting mayor, our first female mayor, and our first black mayor. 
I am absolutely thrilled that we have here with us today, both Mayor Walsh and Council President Janie um, to share in this celebration, this celebration of all of you, this celebration of our community. I wanna thank our older residents on this call for all that you have done and continue to do each and every day for Boston. This past year has been a challenging one for everyone, but the light is at the end of the tunnel. And I wanna encourage everybody who's eligible to get the COVID vaccine to call our office. We are helping Boston's older residents to register for vaccines and we can help you. And there is nobody, absolutely nobody who knows that better then our Chief of Health and Human Services, Marty Martinez, who has been working with Mayor Walsh and the City Council to lead our city's response to COVID. It is my pleasure today to introduce Chief Martinez to say a few words. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Shea, and uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm excited to be here with you uh, to celebrate Black History Month um, and to uh, join in uh, the celebration of our culture, join in the celebration of, of our community, um, and to join Commissioner Shea and, and also saying, um, you know, thank you for everything that you all have done. Um, as seniors in our community, um, you continue to show us what does it mean to get through difficult times, um, and we know it's been uh, a difficult time. Uh, but in that, we lean on each other. Uh, and we support one another. And I just want to thank all of you so much for what you continue to do to help celebrate our community, um, celebrate our culture, and really celebrate all the things that make Boston uh, truly strong. Um, I want to echo what Commissioner Shea said. Um, and, and right now we're you know, still in the times of COVID, uh, but we now do see some light at the end of the tunnel. It's been a long tunnel, but we see some light. And so um, if you can get the vaccine and you're eligible, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, please reach out to the Eight Strong Commission um, so we can help you uh, get an appointment and navigate that. Um, Boston prioritizes our seniors and we will continue to do that. Um, so again, thank you uh, for joining us. And I just want to give a shout out to the Eight Strong Commission. They do so such important work. I see many members of the team on here. And I just want to say thank you for the staff and all the work you continue to do on behalf of our seniors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We could not get through this without you. So I definitely appreciate it. All of that would not be possible and all the work we do would not be possible without our leaders and our elected leaders who continue to do um, this important work. I'm grateful that on this call, we, we, you know, we have our, some of our elected leaders, including uh, President Janie, who's joining us on this call, which I appreciate. Uh, but again, uh, without all the work that we've done would not be possible without the ongoing commitment and dedication to Boston seniors uh, that Mayor Walsh has had. I'm grateful to have worked for the mayor for the past several years. I'm grateful uh, that I've been able to partner with him um, and learn from him along in this work. Uh, so he please join me in welcoming um, our great mayor, Mayor Marty Walsh uh, to join us here. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Marty. Uh, and I appreciate your, your introduction and thank you, Marty, for all your great work during COVID as well. Um, it's been, it's been, it's been, as you said, a long year. Uh, we do see a light at the end of the tunnel. We're headed towards that tunnel and, and our, our office of human services has been amazing. So thank you, Marty. Uh, to Commissioner Shea and Age Strong, um, planning committee members, everyone who helped with this event together. Thank you for your incredible work as well. Um, Council President Janey, thank you for being with us today. Uh, I know we're going to hear from you in a few, a few minutes. I'm going to introduce you. Uh, Valerie Stevens, storyteller, thank you. Cynthia Penton Bell, Bell from the Women's Service Club of Boston. You look marvelous. I'm seeing your picture on here. Thank you as well. Uh, to the musical, all the musical guests, including the Zsa Zsa drummers, um, you know, it's amazing to hear you and thank you for being here. Uh, everyone who submitted uh, pictures of our best of best hat and best high tea set contest, thank you and congratulations. And, and of course, obviously everyone on this call today. Uh, I'm sad that we can't be in person together, uh, but we're all here in spirit and this has been uh, a year almost so, of, of doing what we're doing, but we're almost there. And I want you to, as Marty said, Marty Martinez said, I want you to be careful, take care of yourself uh, and, and get the vaccine. Um, the vaccine is something that's really important. Uh, my mother got her second shot the other day uh, and, and uh, she was fine from it. 
but it's one of those things that that I'm grateful for that because uh, my mother wasn't feeling good this year, and I know that it's been a long year for her as well. Um, Black History Month is all about recognizing the central role that Black men and women have played in our city in the story of Boston. Uh, together, we honor those who fought for our freedoms and for freedoms, those who paved the way and overcome barriers, and those continue to continue to lead in 2021. And that's all of you in this call, uh, in this Zoom, in this meeting, in this gathering. Uh, we recognize everyone who's made an impact on our city, including um, everyone in this call and people that couldn't make this call today. We recommit to knocking down barriers that still exist today. All, all, one, all month long, we've been had great lineups of events celebrating the Black History Month. We're on with the ongoing pandemic, we had to get creative about coming together. This week, the city led by our Black Employee Network uh, will be distributing care kits with PPE to seniors. Uh, they will be out the Radio Lewis Center in Roxbury, so please stop by. And I wanna thank all of our city employees from the Black Employee Network who have really, really done an awful lot over the years, but in particular this year, uh, in a very complicated, difficult year. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for volunteering this weekend and for showing how we look out for one another uh, as a united community. Uh, to all the seniors, I saw a lot of you on the call the other day uh, when, when you said nice things about me and, and I wanna take a moment to thank you again. Serving as your mayor for these past seven years has been the greatest honor of my life. I've been deeply grateful for the roles that we've, you've played in our community. And I said this over and over and over again. Many of you have lived in the city for decades. Some of you have immigrated from other places, but all of you chose to build your lives here and help make our city vibrant, thriving, and a better place. Boston's older adults have taught me so much. You've inspired me throughout my time as mayor and quite honestly before that. I'll never forget all the advice and lessons that you've shared with me over the years or you told me. I thank you for telling me when, when you're not happy with us and I thank you for telling me how much you love the H. Strong Commission. I promise to bring you with me when I go to Washington or wherever I go. Um, as you know, um, President Biden and Vice President Harris nominated me to be their new Secretary of Labor. This is an incredible once in a lifetime opportunity. And it's a responsibility that I'm obviously gonna take very seriously. You know, going is difficult, but I'm bringing Boston's values with me and the lessons that you've taught me here in Boston as your mayor to DC in my ongoing work fighting for working people all across our country. And more than that, I'm gonna keep you in my heart. Whatever questions you have, whether it's about COVID-19 or something else, um, please make sure you call 311, get connected to the Eight Strong Commission. Boston will always have the utmost respect for older adults and nothing will change that. And this isn't goodbye. I mean, I'll probably see you on another Zoom in a week or so because that's what we're doing right now but I want you to know that this city always is here to support you. I wanna thank you again and hope you and your families are safe and stay safe and wash your hands, physical distance, wash your hands with soap and warm water, don't go out too much. If you go out, make sure you keep, keep apart from people. Uh, I know that a lot of people saying to me, you know, I'm, I'm sick and tired of people, you telling me what to do. I'm not telling you what to do, I'm suggesting that we do it because it's really important. Uh, when I do get, um, voted by the United States Senate, what will happen is uh, I'll be sworn in um, as Secretary of Labor, assuming I get the vote, uh, by Vice President Harris, and I will be submitting a letter of resignation to the Clerk of the City Council. And at that point, the Clerk of the City Council will notify the City Council President, uh, and we'll have an acting mayor in the City of Boston. Uh, I've been working very closely with, with, with Councilor Janey and her team uh, as far as having a nice smooth handoff and transition. Uh, she's somebody who's grown up in this city, knows the city very well, understands not just as an elected official, but as an activist, and her family has deep roots in here. So Council President Janie would be more than prepared to step into the role of acting mayor in the city of Boston. Uh, she's here with us today uh, to share some words on, on this special occasion and this special event that we have every year. So I'd like to now, without further ado, turn the floor over to the, the, the president of the Boston City Council, Council Kim Janie. Thank you. Can you hear me okay, everyone? Wonderful. Let me begin by thanking you, Mayor Walls, for your leadership uh, in our city and your commitment to uh, residents who are older and what I like to call more seasoned. Um, I know we all appreciate your work and we wish you well as you go to Washington, D.C. and continue to fight 
uh, for working families all over our country and certainly keep Boston close to your heart. I want to thank uh, Emily Shea uh, for all that you do as a commissioner um, of the Age Strong um, group here in Boston. Certainly Chief Martinez, thank you uh, for your work. I, I am just thrilled to be here as the president of the most diversity council in Boston's history and as the person poised to step into the office of mayor when Mayor Walsh uh, becomes the Secretary of Labor. As Mayor Walsh has already said, uh, my family has very deep roots uh, in Boston, Roxbury and South End in particular. Um, and, and I've learned so much uh, from my family and I believe my mom is on this call. So I, I, I definitely wanna add her to my list of thank yous uh, and show my gratitude um, not only to her, but to the community that raised me. I am standing here uh, poised to make history only because of those who stood before me. I stand on their shoulders and Boston has a long history. In fact, our entire history, uh, we can look back and see ways uh, that black residents have contributed to our society. And so I know that I stand on the shoulders of so many who have come before me, many who have been activists or organizers or leaders in medicine, leaders uh, certainly in education and in other spaces. Um, and so I, I bring those lessons from my family and certainly from the community that raised me into the office of mayor. And I include all of you as part of that. Uh, some of my best times as a city councilor have been working uh, with more seasoned residents, whether of folks who have an agenda, a legislative agenda at the state, um, or, or just contributing in other ways uh, in, into our, our city. And so I'm just grateful. I, as I close, I, I wanna emphasize what Chief Martinez has already said um, around the vaccine and the importance of making sure we are protecting ourselves and our communities. I don't have to share on this call how devastating COVID-19 has been to some of our older residents certainly uh, poor communities and communities of color all over the city. And the way we protect ourselves as a community, as a city is by getting vaccinated. As soon as I am eligible and able, I will be getting the vaccine and I encourage everyone else to as well. My mom has had her first dose and she's eagerly anticipating uh, the second dose. And it's just so important that we get this right so that we can come together, put this Zoom away, for a little bit and, and go back to having uh, the, the wonderful gatherings with our seniors and so many others in our community. So in closing, I just wanna thank you for your, your, your continued work in our city, your, your activism in our city, the way you contribute uh, to our great city. And certainly um, just wanna thank you and look forward to continuing to work with you and to partner with you. So many thanks for all that you do. And it's so great to be here to celebrate a black history, which we know is every single day of the year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council President Janie. I really appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you, Mayor and Chief Martinez. Um, and uh, as we're, as we're uh, moving forward here, I also want to uh, give a big shout out, uh, the mayor did it as well, but another shout out to our planning committee. Uh, we work with a community planning committee to plan this event um, along uh, with the community and folks in my office. And that's how we're make, able to make it such a fabulous event every year. Um, so thank you to that planning committee. Uh, now it is my pleasure to introduce Valerie Stevens. Uh, Valerie is a performing artist and arts educator. And Valerie, I hear you have a passion for history, which I think is fabulous. Um, you've toured nationally and performed throughout New England, and we are thrilled to have you here today. Um, I hear you're going to be entertaining us with a folktale story today. So I'm turning it over to you, Valerie. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Can you hear me? Excellent. Excellent. Yes, I am a very proud Bostonian. My mom and my family have worked towards helping and developing my community. Um, I sing praises of Boston all over the country as I've toured as a performer. I am going to tell you a story about some folks who lived in Boston, but I always start with a song. So 
I'm going to sing a song for you right now. Gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on marching, gonna get to freedom's land. That is a song that has been sung or thought of throughout this country and Boston. That is a song towards freedom. And we represent, <clears throat> the story I'm gonna tell you about is a couple, William and Ellen Craft. Now you might know about them and you might not. So let us start. William and Ellen Craft were born in Macon, Georgia. They were born enslaved. Now, this story is about their escape and movement to their freedom land. William was owned by one plantation owner and Ellen was owned by another. They got married, each had skills. William was an amazing carpenter and Ellen was a seamstress. When they got married, as happened a lot then, they decided they did not want their children to grow up in slavery. They decided to come up with a plan so their children would be born free. This was not easy to do, but many with the heart, determination, creativity, determination did it. What they came up with was this plan. Now, Ellen was light skinned. She was light, light, and you can finish that. Her husband, William, was not. They came up with this plan where that Ellen would disguise herself as a young white man and her husband, William, would disguise himself as her servant. On 18, 1848, four days before Christmas, they put their plan in motion. They dressed Ellen up as a, a young white man. They cut off her hair. She was very, very nervous. You see, Ellen couldn't read or write as was the custom there. And she said, William, what am I going to do? I can't write anything down. They're going to look at me and know I'm not a man and I'm not white. William hugged her and says, we can do this. We can do this. We will wrap a, a rope around your arm and hold it down. But look at my eyes, she said, my eyes. Don't worry, we will find green spectacles, glasses, and put those on you. They'll never see your eyes. Mm. My voice, I don't sound like a man. Don't worry, we can do this. We're gonna tie a bandage around your mouth so that you won't have to speak. And sure enough, that's what they did. Ellen cut her hair. She put on men's clothes that she had made. William had a little money as a carpenter. He had a little money. They bought tickets. On December 21st, that night, they moved out, dressed up, and met at the train station in Macon, Georgia. They had already bought tickets. Ellen went one way, and he came another and they got to the train. Ellen went to the front where white people go in and she waited to get on. She was all by herself. William had to enter the train in the back. Ellen got to the door and standing next to her was the owner from the plantation next door to where she lived. Her heart almost burst out of her chest. In her mind, she screamed, but she knew that she wanted her children to be free and she would do this. She got on the train and sat with all the other white people. Sitting across from her was Mr. Smith who owned that next door plantation. He sat directly across from her. Mr. Smith looked at her. Good morning, young man. Ellen's heart almost exploded in her chest. She said nothing, continued to look out the window. 
Mr. Smith got a little attitude. I said, good morning, young man. Ellen didn't say anything. She continued to look out the window and her heart beat hard in her chest. She just knew, she just knew she wasn't gonna make it. He said at one time, I said, what's wrong with you, young man? There was another man sitting next door and he watched all of this and he said to Mr. Smith, excuse me, sir, but can't you see this young man can't hear? Mr. Smith looked at Ellen. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, all right and sat back. Ellen's heart slowly stopped beating hard and she sat there. At mealtime, William would come out and serve her as a servant would. And then he went back into the back of the train where all the other servants sat. And Ellen was again by herself. She sat and traveled by herself with her husband close, nonetheless, for four days. She traveled along, among white folks dressed as a young white man. Finally, finally, they pulled up into Philadelphia. William went to the tr trunk of the train to help her and a man came up to William and said, excuse me. William looked. Are you a slave? William said, yes, I am. The man said, you're not a slave anymore. You can go do what you want to do. William smiled and said, thank you. But he knew he was waiting for his wife. Well, they gathered together and went to one of the underground stations where William still was there. They asked to go into the restroom and Ellen went in with the bag and she took off the man's hat and she took off the man's jacket and she put on her finest dress that she had brought. She took her big, beautiful bonnet and put it on and came out. The man who was standing there behind the desk said, what happened to that white man that went in there? William and Ellen looked at each other and smile, they said, he's gone forever now. Well, they had made it to freedom. From Philadelphia, they came to Boston. They lived up on Beacon Hill. They lived up on Beacon Hill for two years. And in 1850, the law changed. The Fugitive Slave Act came. And their former owner sent slave catchers all the way to Boston to get them. Bostonians and abolitionists surrounded William and Ellen and kept them safe from the slave catchers. They decided it was time they had to leave this country. And they went and took a boat to England. They lived in Liverpool, England. They stayed in Liverpool, England for 20 years and had five kids. Mm. William and Ellen both learned to read and write. They wrote a book that you can get in the library right now called Many Miles to Freedom. It's been selling since 1860. And it's right over there at the Dudley Library for those who are in my neighborhood. They stayed and they decided to come back to this country once the war was over. Now there's a lot that happened to them. They went back to Macon, Georgia. Their goal was to create a school and they tried and they had hard, hard times. But I'm gonna hold that story for another time. Let's just remember that William and Ellen Craft fought for their freedom. With their strong heart and their determination, they used what they had for freedom. This is not the only story, but that's the one I'm gonna tell you today. Take care with all my love.
gonna let nobody turn me around turn me around no turn me around ain't gonna let nobody turn me around i'm gonna keep on walking keep on marching gonna get to freedom land. very good very good thank you thank you very good Thank you, Valerie. I, I feel like I could listen to you tell stories all day. Thank, Thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, now it is my pleasure to introduce Cynthia Penton Bell. Um, Cynthia is the president of the Women's Service Club of Boston. Such a beautiful hat, Cynthia. I love it. Um, uh, Cynthia, uh, thank you for all that your group does in Boston to make our community a better place to live. And thanks for being with us today uh, to facilitate our high tea ceremony. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, my assignment was to do the heritage of high tea and American, African-Americans in the United States. And 1930, is a new event was high tea. And at that time, you had a gathering of four to up to 200 people would gather. And that's when you have landlords, prominent uh, people, politicians, lady wore the latest fashion and they talked about the current affairs. Men discussed businesses, politics, current affairs. But at that time, Black Americans was either slaves, indentured servants, maids, or butlers who served all the high teas and was able to see the fashion. But important, they heard private discussion that often affected them in high tea service, an opportunity for Blacks to get firsthand information in order to plan and organize. When the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, that same process of, of network, of getting information, eliminated the unfair treatment of sharecropping. In Boston, you had a large permanent black community. And at that time, they was fighting slavery. And our high tea consists of prominent young people uh, abolition as far as Frederick Douglass, uh, Mr. Penn, and we couldn't gather to organize. So that's how we do it in Boston. In the South, what they did was they turned the tea to a punch and they add alcohol to it. And at that time, they would gather more than 200 and they would bring their slaves with them to do all the service. And at that time, that same network of information as far as what was needed for us to improve ourselves during that time, we heard. Another thing they stopped us with teas was the tea house. Most minorities couldn't attend. And in the 30s, we decided to invest in tea houses. In New York, there was one famous one. And at that place, the NACP, the businessmen of color, uh, the writers of sports, they all would gather and discuss organizing. And as minorities, we had to camouflage our tea houses as more or less uh, clubs. We had to serve food, we had to do music, and we had to do dancing. And But most of all, that network of communication and gathering information to proceed as a race worked for us at that time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Um, that was really wonderful. And and I know I have my teapot here today uh, that my aunt gave me. Uh, and I have mine. <laughs> and <very> <laughs> now is the contest. 
I want everybody to get your pencil and your paper, and they're going to show you a little what a video of the competition. That's, that's right. You got it. We're going to turn it over to Taisha and Lorna here, who will take us through our contest. To get started, Lorna. I'm ready. You ready? All right. So let's the best this thing. Stop contest. It. Let's see what we got going here. So let me just make sure everyone, I remind everyone, write down your choices. They're, your choices are going to be alphabetized. So um, write them down and we're going to have an interactive poll at the mm -hmm. end um, uh, of, of showing the slides. And then we'll come back and let you know who won. All right. We have three $50 gift cards for the top winners and everyone else is going to receive a little something, something too. We're not going to forget about you. So let's get started. Best hat contest. First, we got Miss Jamada A A A in her favorite tea hat belong to her mother. Take it in. She is contestant number A under the hat competition. Look at her wearing it. Look at it. Look at it. Diva, diva. <laughs> All right, give you a few seconds to look, and then we're gonna um, proceed to the next contestant. By the way, her location is in St. Catherine Drexel. Oh. <laughs> All right. Next contestant under the hat competition is Lillian O'Neill in her favorite hat. She is an honorary member of the uh, the the two seventy second, um, and this is her favorite hat. So she wanted to share this with us in her picture with Mr. Lewis. Who is that? Who is that? She got the, ooh, she's yes, hot going on. and red. Going on. Mm -hmm. All oh, right, yeah. and she is contestant B, B under the hat competition, Lillian O'Neill. I'm going to proceed to the next slide. Now we got smooth Gloria Johnson. Mm -hmm. now, she's known to wear many hats, but we love her um, in her church flow. Um, mm -hmm. She is contestant number C, um, under this hat competition, take it in and, 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 and make sure you all write down your choice. Look at, she, she got three there. She, she got three there. Oh, that's more. I mean, she's a, she's uh -huh. a she Look at the, in the Nefertiti hat, she got him on, the, she got him sitting on the Nefertiti. Oh, geez. She around. She wasn't mm. around. Mm. So, oh, okay. So take it in and make sure you look at your, your letter of who you want to pick for this section. I'm going to move on to the next section which would be the high T sets. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, let me give everybody a, a, a one. A, yeah, another give them a chance. chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, give them a chance to check out Jamada. Okay. And then, then um, Lillian, which mm -hmm. is B, yes. Gloria, yes. which is What's C. Name? Yes. Jamada is oh, A. What's his oh, name? Lillian is B, oh, Gloria, and somebody need to mute yourself, and Gloria is C. C. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. We ready to move forward, Lorna? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. Best tea set contest. Here we go. Here we go. All we right. Have, yeah. All right. Nazreen oh. Latif. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. Whole layout. She's a, uh, mm -hmm. we call her tea and pearls. Like, I look at like, Look at the like pearls in the cups. Party. I oh, want man. Oh, look at the fruit and stuff in the back. It's yeah, a, I want some of that croissant. Uh-huh. I see that fruit. Mm -hmm. She hooked it up. Nazarene Everybody got Latif. their own teapot. Naz Nazarene Latif is contestant A under the tea set category. Yes. Nazarene Latif is contestant A. Mm-hmm. We ready to move on, Lorna? Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Because okay. oh. now we have Sydney Ann Cornelius who sent in the Lord's Prayer tea set. Mm-hmm. It yeah, says it says secret. It says secret um prayers on 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 the, on the cups. No, it says Lord's Prayer, and Jesus Christ is what it says. Oh, look at look in the um look on the teapot though, Tata. Look it. It says secret prayers on there. Oh, I don't see that. You have oh yeah. Look on the back next to the the water holder. Oh, look at her showing off. Oh, she's she's mm -hmm. B. Cynthia Ann Cornelius is B. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to move on to the next one. Got mine? 
Hold on. Hey, be patient. Hold on. Be hold patient. on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The next, knows? Person, the next, be patient. Let's keep your phones on, your, your devices on mute until we get to the end, okay? Okay. I'll mute. Okay. Thank you. So the next contestant, we have Edith Copeland. We call this tea in the sun. I can see myself mm. on vacation on the beach. Mm -hmm. Nice setup like this. And yeah. just relaxing and enjoying some tea with some friends. Ty, um, you see the good details in it. Look at the yeah, very pretty nice. details, the they flowers. Did they did a yeah. good job. This yeah. is contestant number, tested, contestant letter C, yeah. Edith Copeland, T in the sun. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. We have Gloria Johnson. We call this Ladies Who Lunch. She just, she, you know, she sent in with the hat and she sent in her favorite tea set. Um, I like the cup that says, why fit in? Yeah. You were born to stand, to stand out. out. You, you, Hello, you Gloria. Gloria. Right That's right Gloria now. to the T. Okay. So, All right. She is D, contestant D. And it's awesome. Johnson. The other cup says, ladies who lunch. That's mm. right. Very nice. So she's contestant D. We're going to move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. We oh, have Valerie Tyrant. Sucky who sent in the golden tea set, the golden. Oh my goodness, this is That's out beautiful. of control. Yeah. Who drank from that? <laughs> that looks like it goes back into the Egyptian days. That's oh beautiful. my goodness. That is, that was, mm. Valerie Tyrants is um, contestant E. E, yep. E, all yep. right. Yeah, she she, and she is the last one under in this category. So category. So make sure you write down your choices because because we're going to be doing a poll soon. So, ladies and gentlemen, just to remember that these were folks that sent in their stuff on in the timeline. So, if yours didn't show, I, we apologize. We still love you though. And also when the poll comes up at the end for the, after the last category, if you have a problem accessing the uh, poll, definitely put your answers in the chat box. We have some mm -hmm. people that are looking in on it and they're gonna get the information to me and I'm gonna come back and Lorna's gonna come back later on in the show and we're gonna announce the winners. Mm -hmm. so moving on to the last category. Oh wait, actually, let me stop moving ahead. Let's take one more look. And look at that. Look Nazarene A. Latif, A, A T, T and Pearls. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Ann Cornelius, the Lord's mm -hmm. Prayer T set, B. We have Edith Copeland, T in the Sun, C. We have Gloria Johnson, Ladies Who Lunch, D. And we have Valerie Tyrants, Golden T, E. Mm, they did it. They did it. Mm. All right, let's move on to the next category. Best tea set and hat duo contest. Mm -mm. First, we have Barbara Colbreth. She enjoys tea time with friends. She is A in this category. Look how she's wearing that hat. I'm telling you. She didn't come to play. Uh-uh. Oh, she got an age strong. Oh, she sure did. She, sure did. she said it all. Modeling for us. Good for her. Go ahead, Barbara, with your bad self. Mm -hmm. So again, she is A, and she is in the duo hat and tea set contest. Mm -hmm. We know who this person is. Can I have that she enjoys tea clock? Conversation and tea. Look at that hat. It's all sparkly. I'm telling you, I love that teapot. I love it. Look at the teapot. That is nice. I'm telling you, can I have it? Mm hmm She is B, contestant B. And we're going to take one last look at the contestants in this category, best duo tea set and hat. Barbara well, wait a minute. is A, and Ruth Villard is B. But wait, Ty, I think I like Barbara's. I don't know who I like. Barbara, Ruth, Barbara, Ruth, Barbara, Ruth. Ooh, they both, hard, they decisions. Both hard decisions. They both hard came. Decisions. They're not playing around. I'm telling you. And look at the necklaces. Oh, they just, mm -mm. Said, oh, too much. They're not playing around. So now it's time for the poll. I'm going to pull it up. Actually, you're going to look down on your toolbar where you see your microphone and your camera um, icons, where that's located on your device, and you'll find a polling icon. Click on it. 
You will be able to select your choices from each category. Taisha. Yes. This is Debbie. I don't see nothing, but so if you click on the click on the three dots. Slowly three dot move your your mouse slowly the, the, all the way down. I don't see anything either. And okay. Where's the skip polls? Okay, Con I see a contest poll here. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. And if you have a problem, access it. Definitely put it in the chat box. So can I just can I just check it off like this? Yes, you can. Can I check off one of the, oh, 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 I got two more. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No worries. No worries. You okay. got this. You got this. And then anybody All else right. have any Next. problems? Okay, we're good. Anybody else that have any problems, put it in the chat. Okay. All right. Thank you. Put your uh, mute, 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 please. Okay. I'm done. I okay. did mine. Thank you. You're welcome. The chat is everybody disabled. Talking, okay. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. See some voting coming in. Oh, mm -hmm. good. Ooh, They're making ooh. it happen. Oh, something happened. I, I can't find my it, the poll. I started it, but I don't see it anymore. What happened? Same thing happened to me. Go back to where you found, where you found Can you it do and click it. I don't, I don't see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Should I vote a second? It, I mean, I no, mean, you can't I, second a second time. That's well, true. it came up a second time. You have to vote a second time because she she started it all over again. Yeah, started it all over. So it's that's fine. Okay, is this mm. the last? Then this is the last row round, right? Yep, this is the last round, and um, we'll let everybody know the um who won in a little while. Yeah. All righty. Perfect. You just need to stop uh, sharing that screen. Oh, perfect. And I will spotlight the commissioner. Hey. That was fun. Thank you, everybody. I, uh, I we're, we're learning how to do things like this. So uh, so super fun. I wanna thank everybody who sent in their pictures and participated in our contest. And we will see who those lucky winners are. Um, so now we have come to the ringing of the bell and it is my pleasure to welcome Thelma Burns who is going to do the honor honors for us today. So Thelma, are you here? I heard your voice earlier. I'm here. You ready? Let's spotlight ready? this picture. Wonderful. Woo! Wonderful. Thank you so much, Thelma. And, and now I'd like to invite back Athene Wilson and her fabulous band. Uh, for uh, lift to join us in lift every voice and sing. All right, all right. <laughs> wow, what a wonderful program so far. That was fun, high tea and the fashions, yeah. All right, so um, this is lift every voice and sing. We are doing a special rendition. Um, a good friend of mine, long time ago, Larry Watson, put together a rousing rendition of this song. This is a little faster, but we just kind of brought it down a little bit. But here we go. And I hope you sing it with us. And we can see it. Woo! Lift every voice and sing till love and have a ring. Ring with all our Full of faith. 
that's the darkness that's not a sea of stone full of the hope that the presence has brought us facing the rising sun of our today be let us march on till victory is won. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us back. Thou who has mind, let us into the light. Keep us forever in the past. We pray. We have the winners. Whoop, whoop. You, okay. Which one you want to tell? Whoop, whoop. Um, you start. You can start with the first one. Okay. Your choice for the best hat contest was Jamanda, aka Smith. You won the $50 um, gift card um, to Stop and Shop. And everyone else, we're not going to forget mm -hmm. about you. We're going to give you some swag, too, um, just to say thank you for uh, sending us your uh, pitches. Now, for category two, mm -hmm. uh, the best tea set. So um, the winner in this um, category is Kathy Ann Cornelius. For the Lord, Lord's Prayer, he said, with 22%. Actually, sorry. Oh, man. Whoa. No. You fired, Ty. You fired. No, I'm not fired because I'm going to have to give her something good for. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah. I owe you, Cynthia. I sent the Taisha, end. that happened at the Oscars a couple of years ago. Yeah, I know. It was an Oscar <laughs> thing. And I had to be the one to do it. Okay. I owe you, Cynthia, but the winner, percent of the percent of the of the vote is Valerie Tyrant um E with the golden T set. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Blue ledge. Go with that. No. God bless. And Cynthia, Cynthia, Ann, everybody's going to be getting something, but Cynthia, Ann, because I, I, um, I misstep with that, you're going to get something special from me. So, um, yeah, let's move on to the next um, category. The hability. Lorna. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm over here trying to mute people. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Put okay, the the on mute, please. The oh. choice of the best, best tea set in hat duel comes to be by your vote of seventy four percent, Miss Barbara Coburn. <laughs> All right, Miss Barbara. So again, everyone, you're all going to receive something. We thank you so much to everyone that took the time to submit something. Um, we truly, truly appreciate you all. Wonderful. Thank you. And uh, thanks for such a fun contest, everybody. All right. Now I'd like to invite back uh, Father Oscar Pratt from Catherine Drexel Parish uh, to, for our benediction today. Father Pratt. Thank you. If I could ask everyone to please bow your heads for God's blessing. Lord, we give you thanks for this beautiful time, this beautiful celebration we've shared together. Thank you, Lord, for our local politicians. We ask your blessing upon Mayor Marty Walsh as he moves on to join our current administration. We ask your blessing upon our President Kim Janey as she transitions to the office of mayor of Boston. We ask your blessing upon all these people who serve our elders, who serve the community with such faith and conviction, with such dedication. We thank you for all of them, Lord. We ask your blessing upon all of our elders, upon all gathered here, praying the blessing of Aaron, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 All right, now to close us out today, we have the Ja Ja drummers again. Can we spotlight the drummers? Perfect. Take it away. All right. Thank you again. Yo, yeah, again. In the rock. I am In the shadow. I will abide with the storm of light is breaking over me in the light. I am
Thank you, thank you again, we had the Jaja drummers. Thank you, thank you, Jaja drummers. You were fabulous. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for being on here with us today. Happy Black History Month, uh, lots of celebrations, and uh, have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Nice to see you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. If, if anyone Bye. wants to stay on Thanks, and, everybody. Chat, and chat, we're going to leave this open for a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice. Athene, Athene, yeah. you want to do one more song for us to send people out? Sure, we'll do that. Okay. All right, what a wonderful program. Yeah. All right, everybody get up. Everybody get up. Okay, okay, Let's okay.
Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Aid Strong. Thank you. You're all. welcome. Love yeah. you all. Bye bye. 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 Bye, Ruthie. Bye, Ruthie. Which one is T?